Deep within the rainforest of the Agastya Hills of Kerala live the members of the Kani tribe. The land of the Kanis is a veritable nursery of rare plants, some of which are found only here. According to legend, the Kanis are descendants of Agastya, chief physician to the god. Folklore says that his wisdom of healing has been distilled in the Kanis through the ages. The Kanis are nomads living freely within the lush southern tropical forests of the Western Ghats. Their prowess in healing with plants is widely acknowledged. Kani healers or platis are respected immensely and still use ancient ways to cure illnesses. If there is one plant, however, that lies at the core of their knowledge, it is the Arogya Pacha. The story of this tribe and the unique herb began almost a decade ago, when two Kani tribesmen were hired as guides for scientists of the Tropical Botanical Gardens Institute. Trekking through the leech-infested jungles proved arduous. The scientists found that they were getting exhausted soon. Their guides, however, seemed tireless. The botanists could not help but wonder at this. On closer inquiry, the source of the Kani's boundless energy was revealed. The Kanis would regularly eat the fruit of the Arogya Pacha. The scientists too tried it and experienced a flush of energy. The Kanis were then persuaded to lead the team to this wonder plant, Trichophus zelanicus. Initially, they were reluctant, but the team promised to share all benefits with the Kani community. In 1996, after eight years of research, the TBGRI produced a drug called Jeevani, using the properties of Arogya Pacha. Three years later, in 1999, a trust fund was set up for the Kanis, where the benefits from the sale of this drug are diverted. The money is to be used for the welfare of the entire community. Thus, a unique model of benefit sharing with the original custodians of the knowledge was set into motion. To safeguard India's treasury of biodiversity and healing systems from threat, action is being taken all over the country. In the forests of Madhya Pradesh, Swati, a research scholar, demonstrates the sheer number of plants in a small patch on the forest floor. Extensive documentation of these plants and their numbers is vital. This will reveal a clearer picture of which species is more endangered. Similar work can be seen at the Baif Centre in Tiptur, Karnataka.
Here, an ongoing program aims at the revitalization of local practices. With communities moving away from their traditional practices, it is important to share information. The jogging of local memory often reveals a treasure house of information. The degraded land in the area is now a site where medicinal plants are preserved ex situ. Indigenous plants of the region are planted here and looked after. This seemingly convoluted clump of trees is in reality a collection of six medicinal species growing in a symbiotic fashion. A nursery is also maintained. Apart from being a means of income to the locals who work here, species that are declining in the wild are grown to replenish wild stock at a later date. Apart from deforestation, another reason for the decline of important floral species is the collection of these plants from the wild. The preservation of wild areas is thus the need of the hour. To do this, agencies have simply revitalized the age-old tradition of marking areas as sacred groves where the cutting down of plants is not allowed. The foundation for the revitalization of local health traditions has been instrumental in the setting up of many such areas within the country. Devarayana Durga, a forest in Karnataka, is one such area. Even a short walk through it provides one with glimpses of many plants, both common and endangered, that have tremendous medicinal value. It is clear that India's foremost task is to protect its forests. This ensures much more than the safeguarding of the land with its varied flora and fauna. India has a history of links, cultural, mythological and scientific, with its trees. These links have persevered against great odds, creating extensive philosophies of healing systems. The protection of these fragile bonds lies solely in our hands. A global effort must be made. Only this will ensure the preservation of our priceless heritage.